Hello, everyone. Thank you for sharing your afternoon with me and my fellow TEDx Columbus speakers. The, talk, the topic of my talk today is fracking, or hydraulic fracturing. Actually, for a brief moment, I thought we were going to get some fracking here today after the beatboxing of the young artist from Transit Arts. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so when we talk about fracking, which is very much in the news these days. And then we say that let's take the words that are commonly used by the news media about this topic and, and put together a picture. What would it look like? So that's what this word cloud shows. That, and, and when we look at this word cloud, we see that it sends somewhat of a mixed message. There are promises, but also perils in the use of hydraulic fracturing for shale gas development. So what brings me here today? By profession, I'm a geoscientist and a thought leader, working to help science inform the public debate on hot button items such as climate change, nuclear waste disposal, and more recently, fracking. But why should I care? Well, I do. <laughs> because by inclination, I'm a teacher and I'm passionate about communicating these complex technical issues to general audiences. And in talking to my friends and colleagues, both at Battelle and outside of Battelle, it has become clear that there are a lot of misconceptions floating around about fracking. But what has really bothered me about the state of the ongoing public conversation about fracking is how much of it is really based on opinions and unsubstantiated facts. And after a few such close encounters of the fact challenge kind, I'm like, what the frack, man? <laughs> yeah, what the frack? <laughs> and so, you know, something needs to be done. And that has motivated me to put together this talk. What I want to do is help clear the air, cut to the chase, and provide a fact-based summary about fracking for you. What is it? Why do we need it? And what are the risks associated with this technology? So when we have experience, meeting passion, meeting TEDx Columbus, I get to blow off a little bit of steam in the form of this presentation. <laughs> what the frack? <laughs> OK, let's begin with a little bit of a background. So why do we worry about fracking? Why do we think about fracking? It's in the context of shale gas. And what is happening is that conventional gas reservoirs are being rapidly depleted. So shale gas is becoming an important source of energy supply for the US. As you can see in this chart, around 2000, we had very little gas coming from shale. But in 2011, it had gone up to 34%. And it's projected to be 51% in 2040. So shale gas is going to be very important for the future of our domestic energy supply. So what's the connection between shale gas and fracking? Well, shale formations are tight, very tight. So in a conventional sandstone reservoir, the flow velocity would be of the order of 10 feet per year. In an unconventional shale gas reservoir, the flow velocity would be of the order of one foot in a thousand years, one foot in a thousand years, which means that the shale rock is very, very tight. And the rock has to be cracked or fractured and broken apart so that gas from the pores of the rock can flow to the well and up to the surface. And that is why we need fracking. And, and so how do we do that? Water and high pressure is what creates the fractures and hence the term hydraulic fracturing or fracking. So it turns out that when we talk about fracking, there are a lot of widely diverging views on both sides of the aisle. For example, we are the Saudi Arabia of natural gas. No, no, hydraulic fracturing squanders water resources. Natural gas is cleaner, cheaper, and viable now. Do not drink this contaminated water. There has never been one documented case of groundwater contamination from hydraulic fracturing. Wastewater created by shale gas drilling is radioactive, and drilling companies have not disclosed what fracking fluid is made of. 
Don't worry, increasing abundance of natural gas will create a golden age of gas. Oh no, hydraulic fracturing causes earthquakes. <laughs> and not only that, our friend Dilbert has also chimed in on the subject. <laughs> fracking equals groundwater pollution plus earthquakes. Sweet. As a Randy Newman song goes, it's a jungle out there, disorder and confusion everywhere. So seriously, what are we going to do about fracking? Is it going to be an, a complete stop, a red light, as in New York or California? Or is it going to be an unconditional go, a green light, as in Texas and Ohio? How do we go forward? We do that by analyzing the risks from hydraulic fracturing. And, and in order to do that, we use a systematic procedure that my colleagues and I have used for over 20 years to assess the risks to human health and environment from subsurface operations, which requires asking and answering three questions. What can go wrong? How likely is it? And what are the consequences? So risk is the product of likelihood times consequence, and that is what we will focus on. <clears throat> so let's look at an animation of the fracturing process. First, we drill a vertical well, which turns sideways. Then we inject a mixture of water, chemicals, and sand into the well. So the pressure breaks apart the rock. This creates the fractures, which are held open by the sand grains so that gas can flow into the well and up to the surface. And along with the gas comes the wastewater that was introduced into the well to create the fractures. And that has to be collected in ponds and hauled away for treatment or for reinjection. What are some of the things that can go wrong with fracking? First off, we have leaks of chemicals from surface holding pits or leak in the casing, which is the steel pipe in the well. So how often do these happen? These shallow leaks do happen, but they're not very common. So rough, there have been roughly about 100 documented cases in more than 80,000 well, shale gas wells in operation. So what are the consequences? If there is an exposure at very high concentrations, that creates a problem, but normally that is not the case. Up next, we have possible migration of gas and chemicals through the fractures that were created in the fracking process. But these fractures grow upwards to only about 500 feet. So there is a separation of more than three to 4,000 feet between the top of the fractures and the bottom of the deepest drinking water resource. So that is a, is a defense in depth mechanism, if you will, uh, in, in the system. And then finally, we look at the situation of earthquakes, and this has been very much in the news lately. But actually what happens during the fracking process itself is that we create micro-earthquakes, and these are of the magnitude of minus two or minus three, unless the fracking operation is too close to a fault, in which case the pressurization of the rock triggers earthquakes of the order of plus three or plus four, and that is something that can be felt by human beings. How often do these uh, earthquakes happen? Well, there have been only about a dozen incidents in uh, more than 80,000 uh, fracturing operations. What about the other problem where we inject the frac water back into the earth as a way of disposing it? Well, when these are injected at very high volumes, what happens is that uh, the pressurization affects a much larger rock volume. And so the likelihood of having a, a, an earthquake that can be felt is much higher. And in fact, in um, Oklahoma, in Texas, in Ohio, there have been hundreds of such incidents that have been recorded, including many that you probably read about in Ohio. And that indeed is a cause for concern. So what is the message here? The message is that we really need to pay attention to the possibility that there might be faults close to a drill site which could trigger earthquakes. Unfortunately, there is no 1-800-FIND-A-FAULT. So, <laughs> so what we have to do is to ask geoscientists to do their due diligence and to make sure that regulators put the appropriate safeguards in place so that future seismic risk is minimized. To wrap up, proponents say fracking is beneficial to the economy and safe. Opponents say fracking is harmful to human health and the environment. A wise man once said, we are entitled to our own opinions, but not our own facts. So we got to look at the facts. 
And when we do that, an objective assessment of the facts tells us that bad things can happen, but they are rare, and they can be managed and mitigated with proper regulations and oversight. So there needs to be an acknowledgement that bad things can happen, an understanding that they are rare, and a recognition that we need proper regulations to, to minimize these risks. So from a personal perspective, what is the verdict on fracking? It's not green light go, it's not red light stop, but yellow light proceed with caution. I hope you agree. Thanks for being here today, and have a fracking awesome day. <laughs>